Hi, everyone. Hello. Um, hey, uh, thanks for coming. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think we've got uh, a lot of interesting news. I think it's going to be, I think, very, you know, well received. There's, it's been, uh, you know, hell of a year, but uh, a lot of good things are happening, and I think it's worth going over those those things. So, uh, Model Three, last four quarters is uh, actually selling, outselling all competitors combined uh, in the U.S. Woo! So, uh, all of them. Um, it, it's the highest revenue car uh, in the U.S. and best in class uh, performance. Um, and it's actually the best selling car by revenue um, of I including high volume cars like the Toyota Camry and Honda Accord. So uh, the, the dollar sales. <laughs> yeah, I think most people uh, aren't aware of this. Uh, but uh, we're about the fourth best selling by numbers, but the uh, highest selling by revenue over the past year of any, any car in the US. Um, so that's uh, remarkable that an electric vehicle is the best selling, the highest revenue car in, in, the, in the country. I think a lot, you know, t 10 years ago, nobody would have believed it. Um, and th thanks to the, the hard work of the, the Tesla team, this is, what, this is the result, it's great. And uh, as I said, in, in class, uh, the Model 3 is outselling the Mercedes C-Class, the BMW 3 Series, the Audi A4 S4, and the Lexus combined. <laughs> that, that's... <laughs> that's, that's in, uh, in units. The, the difference is higher in, in, in uh, dollar, dollars. So um, we also have the most energy efficient uh, cars in the world. So this is the EPA miles per kilowatt hour. And you can see the, the Model 3 is at around four. Uh, and then it ranges off to the right. Uh, the, uh, I don't want to pick on the e-tron, but it's, you know, it's. <laughs> there's, there's room for improvement. So, <laughs> it's wrong. <laughs> <All right. laughs> If you speak French, that's, 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 uh, that's quite funny. Um, so the, the new Model S is a 370 mile range. And uh, you can go, uh, we actually did this uh, with the Motor Trend. They drove nonstop from um, the Bay Area to LA. So it was, uh, admittedly, that was downhill, uh, sort of. <laughs> not really. <laughs> it feels downhill, but it's not. Um, so, but on, on a single charge to go from uh, the Bay Area to LA uh, is pretty pretty wild for uh, any any car, and especially a uh, full size uh, sedan. Um, and then the, the new Model X range is 325 miles, despite it being a, a large SUV. Uh, it's worth noting that. Uh, no car has exceeded, no electric car has exceeded the range of the, f the first Model S that we came out with in 2012. So, so. And, um, yeah. <laughs> Resisting the temptation to pick on competitors, I will not do that. Um, but the, uh, it's, 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 still, it's, it's a testament to the Tesla engineering team uh, to be able to uh, have made a car seven years ago that has still not been exceeded in range. And now to have a car that's uh, 370 miles um, and uh, with steady improvements that are likely to occur over the next few years, it won't be long before we have a 400 mile range car. Yeah. So uh, we get this question a lot, um, and it's, uh, I want to be clear, there is not a demand problem. <laughs> okay. It's absolutely not. Um, the, we, we've, uh, sales are, have far exceeded uh, production, and production's been pretty good. So um, we're actually doing, doing well, and, uh, we have a decent shot at uh, a record quarter 
um, on every level. Um, for, if not, it's going to be very close, but, it, but we've got a shot at a record quarter. Um, and 90% of orders are coming from non-reservation holders, so these are our new customers. Uh, Mark three, Model 3 market potential, when we see trade-ins, 63% uh, of the trade-ins are non-premium cars, which means people are trading up to, buy, to Model 3. Um, Um, and 12% uh, yeah, are mid-sized sedans, 25% other premium vehicles. But it's just interesting that the the oh, the super majority, essentially, of the of the, the cars that are being traded in um, are uh, non-premium. So it's just this this is a lot of potential. And and um, when people look at when people look at total cost of ownership, the actual total cost of ownership, because electricity is so much cheaper than Gasoline, and the maintenance costs are much less. Uh, you know, you don't need an oil change or a filter change. Um, you basically never need to change the, the brake pads because uh, of regenerative braking. Uh, the actual uh, operating costs of uh, an electric car are much less than a gasoline car, and um, so it takes a while for to educate people on this because the, the easiest thing to look at is just the the lease price or the, the purchase price, but the uh, when factoring in fuel and maintenance, um, the it's, it's actually buying Model Three is like buying a Camry or an Accord. So, the better, <laughs> yes, better <laughs> from a cost standpoint. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a great car. Uh, um, it's a car that is designed to, to uh, for you to have the most fun, um, and um, yeah, we, we keep. Uh, putting putting gems on it like the the fart app, of course. That's uh, one of my favorites. <laughs> it's like perhaps my <laughs> perhaps my finest work. Um, the autonomy investor day that I think um, was well received. Uh, the the Tesla full self driving computer is literally 20 times faster to 21 times faster uh, than the Nvidia system that it replaces. Um, and uh, we expect to be uh, feature complete with autonomy uh, by the end of this year. So, uh, you know, the, the, you'll still need to supervise the autonomy, uh, but it should be able to go from uh, your, your garage to your parking space at work without intervention. Um, so then, then we'll, we'll obviously put on billions of miles uh, of, of testing, um, and then I think probably sometime next year, uh, you'll be able to have the car be autonomous without supervision, and then sometime thereafter, we'll be able to convince invest, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, regulators that this, uh, the autonomy is safe enough uh, that the car could actually go around with uh, no one in it. So, um, and, and it's really the, the critical elements for that are having billions of miles of testing, um, ultimately tens of billions of miles, so having a huge fleet. Uh, having a, a very powerful uh, AI inference engine, and that's the Tesla uh, full self-driving computer, and, um, and then having the sensors in the car that, that are necessary for uh, the, the car to drive, like being cameras in all directions, radar, uh, ultrasonics, uh, a good uh, IMU, um, GPS, that kind of thing. So. Um, I think we've, we've laid the, the groundwork here for a, a fleet that essentially every car made since October 16 is capable of full autonomy, in our view, with a replacement of the computer alone. So you just need to switch out the computer. Uh, like a lot of people were, were puzzled as to how could I say that we would have like you know, a million robo-taxis by the end of next year. And it's, it's if you sum up the vehicles made since October 16, and, uh, sw and essentially switch out the computers for the ones that uh, were made a after the full self-driving computer a few months ago, the, we will have a, a million cars that are capable of self-driving. We'll still need uh, regulatory approval, uh, but the capability will be there. Um, and this, this massively increases the value of the car. So, in fact, I think it's, um, 
basically financially insane to buy anything except an electric car that is, that, that is upgradable to autonomy. Um, it's just nuts. Um, you can see one country after another is putting dates on banning gasoline and diesel cars uh, and the, 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 the environmental pressure to move away from fossil fuels is getting stronger and stronger. So it's just, it's just basically mad to buy a fossil fuel powered car at this point um, because it's, re it's, it's long term resale value will be less and less. Um, and then it, you, it's also important to buy a car that is uh, upgradable at least to full self driving um, because a, a car that, that cannot uh, do self driving will also be not worth not very much. Um, you know, I've made this comment before, but like essentially, um, it, if, if, you, if you buy a gasoline car that's not full self driving, this is like riding a horse and using a flip phone. I'm like, oh, hello. Uh, <laughs> this is not wise. So, um, you know, it's, it's really, it, it takes us a bit of time to educate uh, consumers about this, but I think people are, are starting to get it. Um, and they like, you know, a car is a, a major investment for most people. Um, it's, it's often their uh, most valuable asset. And if, if you're going to make a choice about your most valuable asset, you want to look towards the future and say, where are we headed? Clearly, we're headed towards electrification. Clearly, we're headed towards autonomy. And so it, that's the kind of car you want to get. <laughs> so I think, I think this is people are starting to, to realize this. Then with the Model Y, um, the, the, this is the, the biggest uh, uh, segment of vehicles in, in the world is the uh, mid-sized SUV. It's uh, two and a half times bigger than the Model 3 market. And so we, th we think probably demand for the Model Y will be greater than the uh, S3 and X combined. Um, and um, we put a lot of effort into uh, the efficiency of the car. Um, getting incredibly low drag coefficient, um, and uh, I think we we might be able to get the drag coefficient actually uh, lower than the three, which will be is, is, is quite unusual. Um, and the, the car has a, a lot of room inside. Uh, it, it's um, I think like a good sense of design or, or a good design principle is if, if the car looks bigger um, on it feels bigger on the inside than it looks on the outside. That is a that is a good design. Um, so this, this car is actually quite big on the inside. And then we, we expect to hit volume production towards the end of next year. Um, internally, we're, we're aiming for, for sooner than that, uh, but we want to have some, some margin on, on that timing. So, yeah. Um, um, I still find it crazy that we have this Gigafactory um, that, that, that used to be just rocks, you know, uh, ro rocks and bushes. Um, and um, I remember, uh, so it was JV and Drew. Um, hey, guys. Um, actually, you guys want to come up and uh, join, join for a sec? Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be good to, uh, you know, maybe you talk about the Gigafactory and, um, you know, uh, I remember when we were, like, doing the calculations uh, for battery capacity and we're like, uh, we need more batteries than all of Earth is currently producing. Um, so, <laughs> so it's, <laughs> unless we build this thing, uh, it's not going to happen. Um, so, yeah, I mean, w maybe you tell the story. You know. um, sure. Well, yeah. uh, good to see everyone. Hello. Um, it, yeah, it, it was a pretty crazy story, and um, uh, Elon and I were just talking about it recently, and it's sort of amazing how some really simple kind of napkin math could lead to such a, a kind of outrageous, you know, result. Um, I mean, as you just said, you know, we, we basically did the, the quick math and looked at, okay, we're going to build, you know, so many hundred thousand cars per year and this many kilowatt hours per car. You know, therefore, therefore, you know, 35 gigawatt hours of, of cells per year. Well, 
that's a huge number, and it was actually more than the entire world was producing for all applications, cell phones, computers, cars, everything, um, just a few years before that. So you know, that, that was what kind of shocked us and said, wow, we, we, you know, this isn't going to work unless we build an entire new facility to, to solve this ourselves. Yeah, if we probably not going to get all the <laughs> battery factories in the world, so therefore we better build this. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the crazy thing is this, this was basically, f I think, five slides. Um, and uh, we showed a picture <laughs> of, a, of a factory <laughs> in the hills. Um, and, and said to investors, uh, we need money to build this thing. Uh, and they gave us the money, which was cool. Um, and, uh, and we built it. Yeah, yeah, we built it. And, and it happened. There it is, right there. It's really giant, um, and it's getting bigger. So, um, you know, we're, we, we have uh, about uh, 35 gigawatt hours of, of capacity potential uh, at Giga right now, um, and then we're about sort of 70 or 80 percent of, of that capacity has been realized. So uh, it, uh, like, I think there was a bit of confusion earlier this year because uh, uh, Panasonic said there was 35, and there's technically yes, but it was, it's not 35 at max capacity yet. Uh, but it will be, um, probably, I don't know, end of this year or next, or early next. So, um, and then um, it's, it's also lowest cost per kilowatt hour. Uh, it's half of all global e EV battery production. So if you add up all the EV, all, all electric vehicles in the world, um, all the batteries that they use, uh, that's approximately equal to what we make at the Gigafactory. Wow. Yeah. And maybe just a, a quick shout out to the whole team out there and the team that's made that happen. I mean, it's yeah, been absolutely. such an epic project. I mean, as you said, starting with dirt, <laughs> literally dirt <laughs> yeah. in the desert, um, to now the biggest battery factory in the world, and it took thousands and thousands of people to do it. Um, Kevin had a huge part in that sitting there. Um, so yeah, it, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing watching that happen, and I feel super proud to be part of that team. Yeah. It was a... <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then we're, we're making good progress on the Gig Factory in Shanghai. Um, if you've watched the progress online, uh, it, it gets followed with in excruciating detail. Um, <laughs> um, I think the number of drones flying over the factory is pretty nutty. <laughs> we need air traffic control. Um, so, uh, but, but the, the shell of the building is, is basically done at this point. Um, it's, it's, I think this might be the, it's the fastest large factory construction that I've ever seen. Um, and maybe there's something faster, but I, I'm not aware of it, because this is, it was amazing. Um, and we're already installing a lot of the factory equipment, the stamping machines. Um, we'll begin installing the paint shop um, and uh, the you know, battery module lines and that kind of thing. So uh, this will be uh, obviously extremely important to our future, because uh, China is the, is the largest uh, electric car market in the world. Um, and to, to date, we um, have, have had to pay import duties, uh, sometimes quite significant ones, um, ranging from 15 to 40 percent, uh, which, um, and, and we did not have access to um, local incentives because th those are only if you make the car in China. Um, now now that the local incentives are going away, I think approximately when our factory starts. Um, <laughs> I think this is a coincidence, but. Um, but, but at least we will not have the cost of the import duties, and uh, we will, uh, it, will, it will cost less to make the car in, in China, so we'll be able to have a more affordable uh, car for the, the China market. So this is extremely important to Tesla's future. And then uh, Gigafactory Europe. Uh, as you can see, we've made great progress here. <laughs> um, we, we just put this picture in like literally five minutes ago. <laughs> this is just deep planning here. This is not at the actual place that it'll be. <laughs> this is a generic picture of the of Europe. <laughs> people are going to try and reverse engineer exactly where that picture. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure people could figure it out. Beautiful but, um, scene. Yeah, lovely. Um, the factory there. I think it may be near Hamburg or something. Um, but uh, we're, we're still um, it, it, looking at what the right place is to put uh, Gigafactory Europe. Um, Hopefully, we'll make that decision towards the end of this year. Um, and 
and it also makes sense to have a, a car factory at least on each continent. Uh, this is a wise, wise move. Um, we'll continue to expand, I think, um, our activity in, in the US, but um, ha having to not uh, pay tariffs and, and, and have the really long uh, delivery chain and high transport costs uh, will make the cars a lot more affordable to people in Europe and in China. So, um, yeah, we're looking forward to making a decision on this, uh, hopefully towards the end of this year. Uh, and then Tesla Energy, uh, we're, we're looking at probably at, at least doubling uh, uh, energy storage growth for Powerwall and Powerpack uh, compared to 2018. Um, internally, we have a bigger goal than that, but it, I think we can at least double it. Um, and uh, so it, it would be at least sort of on the order of two, maybe approaching three gigawatt hours. And we're installing the solar roof uh, in eight states. Uh, we're about to complete version three of the solar roof. Um, so this is actually quite a hard technology problem to have an integrated uh, solar panel or, or solar cell with a roof tile and have it look good and, l and last for 30 years. Um, like roofs have to last a long time. <laughs> so the, it, it's, it, it is, um, the amount of testing that one has to do and do, and do accelerated life testing to say, how can we predict what, how this will perform if we just spend six months of testing and project that out to 30 years? So it, it's, it's quite a hard problem. And then making it easy to install, uh, getting the cost low, um, but I'm really excited about uh, version three of uh, solar roof, um, and I, it's, um, I don't want really to be overconfident on this, but I think that we, we can, we have a shot at um, being equal to a comp shingle roof uh, uh, plus you, someone's utility costs, or, or, or being maybe lower than that. So that, that, that's like one of the cheapest roofs available. So you can have a, potentially a great roof um, at, with better economics than a, a, a normal, fairly cheap roof and your utility bill. So if you can have like basically a, a better product at a lower price, that is obviously will take off like, like crazy. So, um, but it is a hard problem to solve. Like uh, many other companies have tried to solve this problem and they have not succeeded. Um, but I, I think uh, I, I'm feeling pretty good about this. You guys want to say anything about that? I would just say that the team is super motivated by that goal, and yeah. we think we can achieve it. And we are, I mean, we are laser focused on achieving it. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, Drew, I've had a number of meetings with with Drew. We're like, bang the table, damn it, we've got to achieve this. <laughs> it can um, be done. It can be done. Intention, intelligence, and invention. You yeah, make it happen. Uh, so. <laughs> Um, maybe we should actually introduce Drew properly. Yeah, actually, um, sure. Sorry, sure. I, we kind of forgot to do that. Uh, um, Drew, Drew has been, uh, this is your 14th year at Tesla, so <laughs> yeah, Drew is not exactly a stranger. <laughs> so Drew joined my team when, um, I mean, it was a tiny, tiny team, there were like five or ten of us or something, a couple years after the company got started, and uh, you know, he's been kind of, you know, I don't know, my right-hand person, you know, involved in all. Thanks for in introducing me, JB. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. so, yeah, I mean, Drew and, and uh, his team have, have been really key to a lot of the powertrain innovations, um, battery innovations, uh, and uh, solar roof, and a number of other things. So, uh, it's, it's always a pleasure having those uh, engineering discussions, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Mutually, the feeling is mutual. All right. Yeah. Cool. Love you, love you too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, we, we got the the version three supercharger. Um, it, it was actually like the the scope of of technology that is advancing at Tesla is is really tr massive on many fronts. Um, so as I mentioned, we've got uh, version three of the solar roof. Uh, coming out soon. Uh, we've got uh, version three of the supercharger that's being deployed around the world. Um, and this is a 75 miles in five minutes capability um, at 250 kilowatt uh, system. Uh, if, I'm sure a lot of you have used the superchargers before and they've t uh, typically been anywhere from 75 kilowatts to 
if, if, you, if you've used one recently, you might have gotten up to 140 kilowatts. Um, that's, but that's the version two, and then version three is uh, 250 kilowatts. Um, and when, when 250 kilowatts are charging a really efficient car, the miles, the miles per minute is f super good. Um, and in fact, I think there was recently a test um, where the, the, uh, I'm not sure who it was, but uh, tested like what car could charge the most number of miles in half an hour. Uh, it was the Model 3. Um, that, so, yeah. So. Um, and then we'll be publishing uh, new maps uh, for the uh, supercharger deployment. Um, and uh, we're, we're finally going to get the Trans Canada Highway. Um, and, uh, <laughs> for example, uh, <laughs> and then we're going to get Alaska too. Um, so, yeah, the, the actual, the, the, this, this, this map doesn't even include all of the, the locations. Uh, but but the, the, really, like the, the two critical factors we've found for sales in, in any given region, and, and they're really obvious, actually, are, is, is, is there a service center within reasonable distance? And it, it, are there superchargers on all the routes that you'd like to take? Um, you don't want to have like 80% of the routes, because then like, oh, geez, but what about that one trip that you can't do now? So you really want to have it's superchargers and service centers are the absolute key uh, to, to sales. Um, and uh, really, we can, we can map our sales to, like, basically, people are just, like, sensible. <laughs> They're like, uh, okay, you need to service your car, and you need to be able to travel conveniently on long-distance routes. Um, and so wherever we've got that, we, our sales are good. Um, uh, we also have to have good consumer financing and make sure pricing is competitive. But it's, it's, it, as soon as people see that, they, they buy the cars. It's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, and so we'll, we'll be expanding the supercharger network uh, quite uh, substantially uh, over time, um, and also enabling uh, Tesla to use uh, other uh, high-speed charging networks. Uh, so you have like a, a adapters for that. Um, and the, the key is like when you buy a car, you're, you're buying freedom, freedom to travel, um, and and then and and so you must have the superchargers. You must have high-speed charging. And then if the car breaks, it must be fixed quickly. Um, I'm actually really excited about our, our mobile service. Um, so uh, we have mobile service vans that will um, come fix your car um, as, as soon as it breaks down. It actually will immediately send a note to Tesla mobile service and, um, and will be on its way to fix the car. And so we, we, we're actually... Um, we, we, we trialed it um, in, in the Bay Area, and now I've extended it to the LA area and a number of others for, for tire repair. So we'll just come, the, the van will, will arrive, uh, give, give you a new tire in half an hour, and you're on your way. It's, it's like, it, ma it makes a huge difference. Um, so that's, uh, and, 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 and we're adding things like bumper repair and mine like collision repair. So, um, you know, if I look at the things that um, most trouble customers, it's like things like uh, collision repair taking an eternity, um, <laughs> and, and then a third-party body shop ch charging an arm and a leg uh, after taking an eternity. So um, we're, we're moving a lot of the, the body repair uh, in-house at Tesla, um, and. Um, and, and then even providing it on, on mobile service. Um, and we, we just did our first uh, uh, bumper replacement um, from, from a mobile service van. So like, typically, collision repair can, can take weeks or months. In this case, it took less than an hour. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's right, cyberpunk truck, yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, obviously, got the I think the, the product uh, roadmap for Tesla is is incredibly exciting, um, and uh, you know with obviously Model Y uh, c coming fairly soon, um, you know about a year or so, and then the pickup truck, uh, which uh, we hope to unveil um, hopefully this summer. Um, we spent a lot of time on design of the pickup truck, so it's. Um, 
I think it's going to be great. Um, and um, like, I think it's the coolest car I've ever seen, to be frank. I think it's, not everyone may share that opinion, but uh, w worst case scenario, uh, we'll build a normal looking truck. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> and we know what those look like. So um, th this, this is something that'll, if you're driving it down a road, it's look like it came out of a sci-fi movie. So it'll be really cool, I think. <laughs> and then the, the semi, which uh, um, we, we look forward to getting into production, um, you know, hopefully tow towards the end of next year. Um, a lot of this also is dependent on uh, our ability to uh, manufacture a lot of cells and make a lot of battery packs. So um, there's, there's not much point in adding product complexity if we um, don't have enough batteries. <laughs> then, then it's complexity with, but without gain. So um, we're, we're, we're matching the, uh, the product rollout according to the uh, scaling of, of battery production. Um, that's really the, the main limiting factor. Um, and, and then as we, as we scale battery production to very high levels, we actually have to look further down the supply chain. Um, and um, w w we might get into the mining business, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a, yeah, a little bit at least. Um, so we'll do whatever we have to to ensure that we can scale uh, at the fastest rate possible. So uh, to this point, we are going to have a battery and powertrain investor day uh, that uh, Hopefully this summer, um, before the end of the year for sure. Because um, I think we, this is a <laughs> big deal. I, I mean, I think if, if I were an outside investor, I would really focus on, on two things. Uh, what is the timeline to full self-driving? And wh what is your plan to scale and, uh, battery production and, and, and get the cost per kilowatt hour lower? Those, those are it's basically battery cells and full self-driving. Those are the two strategic things that are of most importance. Haha, <laughs> exactly. <laughs>